Good day everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as Nurse with the Difference and I make learning easy and accessible for students. In our last video, we talked about malaria, the different species of malaria parasites and also the life cycle of the malaria parasites. Today we are going to be talking about how to prevent malaria infection and also the signs and symptoms, the nursing management and the medical management. So if you know you don't understand this and you want to get an insight of what these topics are all about, kindly stay tuned. For those that are new on our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be talking about the prevention of malaria, the signs and symptoms of malaria, the nursing management and also the medical management of malaria. But the first thing we are going to be talking about is the prevention of malaria. How do we prevent malaria? Remember there is a saying, prevention is better than what? It's better than cure. So what are the various things we need to do to prevent malaria? So the first thing I have here is apply insect repellent. Have you heard about insect repellent? There are some insect repellent cream in such a way that when the mosquito bites you, it doesn't affect you. It repels the mosquito, it drives the mosquito, so they used to rub when you are sleeping. Especially when you know the area has a lot of mosquitoes in it. Then the other is wear long sleeve and long pants. It is advisable. It's looking strange, but yes, you have to educate your patient that they should put on long sleeve and long pants, especially when they know they are going to be exposed with this malaria parasite. Then the other is that we are used to is spray insecticide. We have a lot of insecticides in the market. Some are more infective than the other. So it's advisable you spray, you, you spray your environment, you spray your rooms so that you can sleep comfortably like a baby and wake up like a giant the next morning. Then the other is clear nearby bushes. Clear nearby bushes. Bushes are areas where mosquitoes can easily breed. There are areas where mosquitoes can easily multiply. So it's advisable you clear what you clear the nearby bushes to reduce the space, to reduce the scenarios where they can really, really breed. Then another prevention is removal of stagnant water. These are the things we are being taught in primary and secondary schools. You have to remove stagnant water. Wherever you see water gathering, it could be in a pool, it could be anything, it could be cover of um, a bowl. But just try as much as possible to remove stagnant water so you will not create a place for the mosquitoes to breed because mosquitoes they breed effectively well in waters that is why you see areas where there are a lot of pond water there's a lot of dirty water around you skip you see mosquitoes breeding around so the best thing remove stagnant water clear your areas of stagnant water and then the other is use of mosquito net i believe a lot of us are familiar with this i think i'm using mosquito net so you have to use mosquito net to prevent malaria to prevent mosquitoes from biting us so that's that for mosquito net. then always eat balanced diet how's your nutrition like are you taking enough food are you taking enough vegetables are you taking a well nutritious diet so you have to eat good food in order to boost your immune system, in order to build your red blood cells. The fact is, in malaria, what is being affected is the red blood cells. So when the malaria is destroying your red blood cells, rupturing your red blood cells, if you are not taking enough nutrients or a well just diet, it can lead to what? Anemia. So you have to eat well, you have to also stay healthy in order to prevent what? Malaria. Then also there's what we call this sulfur dioxin pyrimetacin. It's a preventive, it's a prophylactic drugs for malaria. So you can actually give it to a prescribe to a patient, especially for pregnant women. They normally give them some doses of um, sulfur dioxide, pyrimetamine, to prevent malaria during the course of what pregnancy. So these are the little tips I have for you when it comes to what the prevention of malaria, not pregnancy, sorry, the prevention of malaria. Hope that is clear and hope we are getting it. If you have any useful tips on how to prevent malaria and you would like to share with us, kindly drop on the comment section. I'll be glad to learn from you today too. So that takes us to the signs and symptoms of malaria. 
How do I know my patient is having malaria? What are the signs and symptoms that my patient portray? So the first one is shaking chills and high fever. When we explained the life cycle of malaria, we said that the red blood cells, they rupture, right? They burst open. So during that process of rupture, during that process, they burst open. That's when the patient starts feeling chills. That's when the patient starts having hypertemia. When the red blood cells, they, um, they rupture. So the sign and symptoms of malaria we said was shaking chills and high fever. This patient will be sweating profusely. There will be profuse sweating. The patient will be having headache. Oh, my head, headache. You understand? Then there will be nausea and vomiting. And we all know that nausea and vomiting is what? Gastrointestinal disturbances. So you can get nausea and vomiting. Then abdominal pain. So a patient go down with abdominal pain. My stomach. Then we have anemia. Like earlier said, anemia in the malaria, the red blood cells have been affected. So the red blood cells have been destroyed. And you know when there's reduced red blood cell in the body, there's going to be reduced hemoglobin in the body, and there's going to be reduced oxygen carrying capacity in the body. And that is resulting in what? Anemia. Then the other is convulsion. And we all know that when somebody is having hypertemia, there's an increase in body temperature. Definitely there's going to be what? An increase in the metabolic activities. And when that happens, convulsion can take place. Then we have coma and blood is too. Coma, yes. Malaria can be that severe. I'm not joking here. Malaria can be very, very severe that it has to get to a coma stage. You have to get to cerebral malaria. The brain has been affected. So malaria is not something you should use to play. It is advisable you treat as malaria as soon as possible when you start going down with the symptoms or when you notice your patient going down with the symptoms because malaria can lead to death. As small as malaria that you think that you used to treat can actually lead to death. So that is that for the signs and symptoms of malaria. But before I go into the medical treatment proper, we know our job. I am a nurse, so I can't end my lecture without telling you the nursing diagnosis. So what are the nursing diagnoses for malaria? Can you start? Just think. From the signs and symptoms that are given here, what do you think are the nursing diagnoses for malaria? So the first I have, I can think very well. It's easy. High fever is already telling you that there's hypertemia. I will on track. There's abdominal pain, there's headache. It's already telling you that there's what acute pain. Then what do we have here again? Um, there is profuse sweating. No, let's not use that. There's nausea and vomiting. Most of the patients in Malaria sometimes they have anorexia. So we can apply imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, and we can also apply anxiety. But if I'm in the exam condition, what I'm going to write for malaria is going to be hypertemia, it's going to be pain. And it's going to be anxiety. You know, anxiety is my favorite nursing diagnosis. So, in terms of hypertemia, how do we relate it? So, it's going to be hypertemia related to the activation of the thermoregulatory center of the brain, evidenced by what temperature of 38 degrees Celsius, evidenced by temperature of 39 degrees Celsius, evidenced by temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. So, you can actually drop that hypertemia related to what. The activation of the thermoregulatory center of the brain evidenced by temperature rise or you can relate it to increased metabolic activities then the acute pain acute pain how are we going to relate the acute pain now all right acute pain related to disease process in short evidenced by patient verbalization then anxiety anxiety related to the cause of or cause of the disease Evidenced by patient's facial expression or evidence by patient asking um, too many questions They can add deficient knowledge if you deem it fit. Hope you understand that um, nursing diagnosis Then that takes us to the medical management for malaria In terms of the medical management for malaria Generally, we all know anti-malaria. We have a lot of anti-malaria drugs. We have coatem. We have a um, we have coatem. We have lumefactory did I? I'm not on track. But we have a lot of anti-malaria drugs with so their different brand names. But the ones that are normally used are your Atemital and Lumefatrine. They combine it together. But we have different brand names in, a, in the society today. So we can give analgesics, especially for the pain. These analgesics and antipyretics help to reduce pain and also helps to reduce the body temperature. Now, we are done with a class. What is your nursing intervention? What is your nursing management of malaria from the signs and symptoms and also from the nursing diagnosis we gave we said that there is what there is hypertemia 
So as a nurse, you ought to be managing for what? Hypertemia. And what is your nursing intervention for hypertemia? You know a patient that is having hypertemia, you have to expose nearby windows. You have to switch on the fan if need be. You have to tap it to punch the patient. And you have to give what? Antipyretics. So those are some of your nursing intervention for hypertemia. And you also have to check the vital signs, especially the temperature. To know if there's a temperature rise or there's a reduction in the body temperature. And also, this patient is complaining about pain. So it's your duty to assess the level of pain. It's your duty to give a prescribed analgesics. And it's also your duty as a nurse to provide diversional therapy, provide a quiet and calm environment for your patient when it comes to pain. And in terms of anxiety, you assess your patient's level of anxiety. You establish a good rapport with your patient. You encourage them to verbalize their fear. And you tend to help them better to explain the whole thing about this malaria. Hope this video helped you understand what the prevention, the nursing management, and also the nursing um, diagnosis of malaria. Don't forget the prevention of malaria. This is your duty to educate your clients about the prevention of malaria. So as a nurse, even if you are forgetting everything, don't forget what? Don't forget the prevention of malaria. Don't forget the signs and symptoms. And also don't forget your duties to play as a nurse. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this video actually helped you understand what this whole malaria thing is all about. For those that have not watched the first video, hurry down. Just go and watch the first video. So you have a full package and you will be well grounded about what malaria is all about. And also, before I forget, for those that have not registered for our classes on Telegram, seriously you have been missing a lot i'm not joking you have been missing a lot all you have to do is to send a message to the whatsapp number showing on your screen and get registered today when you register with us you are able to have access to all our voice notes in a various system cardiovascular respiratory digestive community research you have access to all those voice notes with ease with just one payment no renewal so for those that have not registered on our telegram platform kindly do so and have a lot of knowledge and have opportunity to ask your questions i will also provide answers to these questions thank you and see you in our next video bye